Hello, and welcome to the SciShow Talk Show, the day on SciShow where we talk to interesting people about interesting stuff in our new place, our new land. Welcome. Thank you. This is Vanessa Hill of Braincraft. Hello, and thank you. The new land is very nice. You like I it? like it. I like your new digs. Thanks. This is yeah. our actual office. Previously, we recorded uh -huh. at like a place that we just rented and, and went into, and then sometimes people would come in and they'd be like, what are you doing? <laughs> and now we have an office. Yeah, it's with nice. This happening behind yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. It may cool. change over the course of more talk shows. We're still <laughs> working on it. Uh, thank you for being here. Of course. Uh, Tell me a little bit about what you do for the people at home. For all of the people. Okay, so... I, I'm kind of familiar. <laughs> um, I'm the creator of Braincraft, which is a YouTube channel on neuroscience and psychology and human behavior. It's with PBS Digital Studios, and I create short videos about the brain and other things areas of science that just interest me sometimes. Right, right, right. Um, I like to do stop motion animations. So my kind of original idea for the channel was I want to create stop motion videos about the brain, which is a bit random. Mm -hmm. It's a bit specific, hey. but I just thought it could work. And I started doing animations with little bits of paper and kind of moving them around mm -hmm. and everything. And I got better at doing them over time. And the show's kind of developed over time as well, mm -hmm. um, where I probably do about one video a month that has those animations in it. And then I have some other bits of content that go up, like me talking about other things. And that are a little easier to produce. That are a little easier to produce. Yeah, that make my life a little bit easier. Yeah, yeah. so that's my YouTube channel. Cool. And why did you start doing that? So I worked in the classroom previously, which was really what's your, fun. What's your background? Let's go all the way back. Let's go all the way back. Okay. okay. Uh, so I, I went to college, as you call it. Yeah. What, did, what do you call it? <laughs> Uni. Okay. <laughs> like university. You can call it university. I think that we would understand that. You well. would understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, you know, I, I, di I did that. I did a Bachelor of Science and I majored in psychology, but I wanted to be a zookeeper. I, I just oh, always well, liked you animals. you get to talk to a zookeeper later I know, today. I know, which is amazing. Uh, but I, I went to the University of New South Wales in Sydney because I could study zoology and creative writing at the same right. time. And but then that you, was... For psychology. But then I ended up majoring in psychology and I studied um, biology and anatomy and a bunch of different things mm -hmm. while I was there. Um, and then when I graduated, I started working for Australia's National Science Agency, the CSIRO, and I was an educator with them, so I worked in outreach. Um, and I did that for about four or five years and I went to schools all around Australia, which was super cool because mm -hmm. they were a federal agency. And right. we had, I mean, if you imagine like a museum in a box type setup mm -hmm. where you have a class that you give and mm -hmm. we gave classes across all areas of science from like five to 18 year old kids and then young adults, basically mm -hmm. from kindergarten to senior high school. Uh, and we covered everything from like entomology to geology to astronomy to genetics and all areas of science. And we would have like three or four boxes with a kit for one program. Mm -hmm. And we would spend a day or two at one school and see all of their kids and kind of develop and deliver these special education programs. That's that cool. Had. And I imagine yeah. in Australia, there's a lot of schools that are fairly rural and might not have yes. easy access to a museum. Definitely. Yeah. And I went to some pretty wonderful places and I feel really lucky to have gotten to do that because I feel like a lot of people don't travel in their own country a lot. And I spent a mm -hmm. while like up on the Great Barrier Reef and in my kind of pickup truck that I had with all of my yeah. educational yeah. programs in the back, my science <clears throat> truck, uh, I, I spent a day on a barge going to tropical islands and uh, went to the outback. Were you going to, to teach desert. people on tropical islands? Yeah, I wasn't just going there for fun. I mean, it well, was, I thought but... maybe you were like <laughs> collecting for the museum. Oh, you, I see. There were, there I were see. students there that you. There were students there. Okay, so yeah. it's not just like a tropical island where there's no no humans and people live everywhere. We, you know? co we cover the whole yeah, planet. Yeah, we do. <laughs> um, so I went to a lot of places and got to see kids from all walks of life, which mm -hmm. was really interesting as well, and see schools in lots of different places because Australia now operates under an Australian curriculum. So uh, we only have seven states and a couple of territories, so it's kind of easier to manage than the US. <laughs> yeah, well, also our yeah. states are... <laughs> They are very, I think, very independent as yeah. states go. Yeah, so... Which is how it was built. Yes. And we... 
it has its pluses and minuses anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Australia operates under an Australian curriculum. So all of the states have the same curriculum. And I was doing this program, say, in schools, in private schools in the middle of Sydney, mm -hmm. and then in government schools in the middle of the desert. And it was just so interesting to see how one curriculum doesn't necessarily translate to every right. child at the hmm. same year level. Um, and then you decided that you're going to start making YouTube videos. Yeah, I mean, what I did actually... Did you watch a lot of you? Did you start like as a fan of content? Yes, I did start as a fan of content. And something that was interesting, because I was in all of these random places, there's nothing to do when you finish work. There's like a hotel and a pub, and yep. it's the same place. And it's normally full of like people who work in mining and wear a lot of like high vis clothing and stuff like that and I would have dinner there and then I'd be like probably time for me to leave now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I actually I got really into photography and I used to take photos of all of the random places I was going and of the night sky and do time lapses and everything like that when I was in these really random places and I started putting them online so I developed a small following but a bit of a following just as like Vanessa the traveling science educator right and also when I was in these places I started watching a lot of videos and that was interesting to me um, then about I think it was about three years ago now there was a whole bunch of youtubers who came to Australia for an event in our National Science Week so I met um, I met Henry from Minute Physics, I met Destin from Smarter Every Day, the ASAP Science guys, Mitch and Greg were there as well. Uh, Derek from Veritasium was living in Sydney, but he was also part mm -hmm. of that, so I knew him. And yeah, there was just, I met a bunch of people and I uh, got to travel around with them a little bit and kind of meet up with them in different places. And it was kind of inspiring to me to see what they were doing. And mm -hmm. I thought I could probably do this myself. I would Plenty like to do this like, myself. Hey, you, can, you can do this, do the thing. I think I spoke to them about it. I remember speaking to Henry a lot about yeah. it because his style I think inspired me a lot and uh -huh. I really liked what he was doing. He slept on my couch in Sydney for a week <laughs> and made a minute physics video in my living room. So like <laughs> it was, yeah, so I got to see the process and it was, it was interesting for me to see what everyone was doing. And I think it was interesting because at that time, I can't even remember what subscriber numbers were like in 2013, but mm -hmm. those channels were really popular on YouTube and had big followings. And there seemed to be somewhat of a formula to it, I thought, because I saw what they were doing and I saw the kind of videos they were putting out and they were putting them out regularly and they all seemed to build a really nice audience. And I was like, gosh, I could just do that if I just did videos like that and I put them out at this kind of frequency, mm -hmm. like this could be my full-time job. And it was really hard and it was really hard to grow an audience and I like, you know, worked my butt off doing it and it wasn't easy. No. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, of course it wouldn't be easy. But yeah, I mean, I think just because I had a very skewed experience because I was only hanging out with people who mm -hmm. had been very successful at it and they yeah. made it look easy, but yeah. that's only because they're all so good at what they do. Um, so it took me a long time, like a couple of years to find my feet, mm -hmm. I think, until, and I only a few months ago, I think I became confident in my content. I'm, I'm saying like two months ago, I only started to <laughs> think of myself as like yeah. a proper YouTuber because before that I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't really have an audience. I'm just like making things and putting it on the internet and comments are weird and I just didn't really know how to right. approach it at all. So I'm happy about it now. So how did you go from zookeeping to psychology to brains? Why did you decide that that was gonna be the thing that you wanted to talk about on your channel? Right. Um, the zookeeping thing was interesting. I did an internship at Tronga Zoo in Sydney uh -huh. and I ended up in the education centre there and discovered that I really liked talking to people about science mm -hmm. and just interacting with people more than animals. Now I'm like, people are the worst. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, YouTube comments will do that to you. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so I studied, I mean, the first couple of years of university were pretty general, like mm -hmm. biology type sciences. And then I just specialized more in psychology and brain science type mm -hmm. subjects. So I ended up majoring in psych. Um, I did a couple of neuro subjects at university as well. And I think when I was trying to think of what to do for a channel, there seemed to be a lot of physics channels on YouTube, mm -hmm. a lot of chemistry content, some biology content, but there was really nothing that was just focused on the brain. Mm -hmm. So I think because that was something that I had studied and I was interested in, I saw it as a nice 
opportunity. But I mean, I'm in no way an expert and I work a lot with um, PhDs and working professors and things like that to develop mm -hmm. scripts and fact check things that I have written myself. And I think that it's something that is sort of universally interesting because we all have a brain. Definitely. And we, none of us know how it works. I, and like, no. like, go, like we go even, through our... even people who study it and, and right. talk about it and, and work in universities know more about how it works than yeah. we do, except by no means do we, we have all of the functions down pat. Yeah, it's very strange to be, to like live your life as basically a thing that you don't understand. It's like the an, weirdest un, like thing. Like I am an ununderstandable thing. Yes, and I mean, inside of your head, like yeah. if I, you know, just cut it open and, and, and took your brain out, I'd be a bit messy, except it would just be- <laughs> It a... was also, I think they might call the cops. Really? Like, yeah, yeah, I think you might have to go to jail for a long time. Okay, I think hypothetically, we... let's talk hypothetically. <laughs> if that happened and it was fine and we could just put it back in and then you would work right. perfectly okay. well again. It's just a, like a three or four pound lump of tissue and fat that just makes you, you, and mm -hmm. it dictates how you operate and how you think and how you move and act. And it's so weird. It's very weird. And I, I oftentimes think that I understand why I make decisions, but I don't think I do. No. It's been really interesting reading a lot of papers, doing BrainCraft, and in a way, when you do a show like that, I read more papers in a month than I, than I ever read in four years of university. And I've learned a lot more about psychology mm -hmm. in the past couple of years than I ever did when I studied it. And I learned more about how I work and I just confuse myself. I'm like, but I do this and I know I do this and I understand why, but I keep doing it. Right. And how can I not correct these flaws in my own psychology? <laughs> I, rec I have identified the problem. Yes. I'm, I'm like... going to continue executing the problem. Yeah, but I try not to execute the problem, but I yeah. can't fix it. Like, for example, uh, cognitive biases are really oh, interesting. Yeah. I, feel like, I feel like I can keep like two in mind. Mm -hmm. But there's like 27. There like are so many. Yeah. yeah and, and I'm like, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on these two. And then as soon as I try and add a, add a third, I'm like, oh, I dropped that one. <laughs> well, one <laughs> of them, a big one for me, is one called the planning fallacy. Mm -hmm. And it's where you underestimate the amount of time that it takes for you to complete a task. Oh, yeah. Everybody I work for has that problem. Yeah, and but I have this in me. a big way. And I, I work for myself and by myself yeah. and it just festers and I think gosh I'm going to take this amount of time to do something but I'm going to allow an extra two hours to, to allow for the planning fallacy and it just doesn't even matter because it takes me an extra four hours <laughs> and it's just <laughs> yeah and and I, I can't get over it and I've always been like that and people I've worked with in the past know that I'm like that and I just cannot yeah. correct this. It's like once you're done with the thing you're like that wasn't so hard. Yeah. <laughs> I did it. Look, it's done. And you forget all of the, all of the things that you did in order to make that happen. Yes. Immediately go away. Yeah. yeah I, uh, I, have, I have the same problem. This, we're off topic now, but um, where I know that there are certain behaviors that make me happier, mm -hmm. and yet I have a very hard time executing them. Yeah. I'm like, why? Like, I, I know that if I get up at the same time every morning, mm -hmm. that makes me a more productive, happier, healthier person. When you go on morning and, walks. Yeah. Yeah. I watch your snaps. All right. I know about your morning walks. <laughs> so, and, and it's like so, <laughs> hot, like, really but then like now. every every morning at 7.30, I'm like, who in their right mind would wake up right now? I know. So you have anything uh, interesting, special going on with Braincraft right now? I have one thing coming up that is very special. And I actually don't think the world knows about this oh, yet. Oh, this is new. We're breaking news. We are breaking news. I haven't, I haven't tweeted it. I haven't snapped about it. I haven't posted this publicly. This is exclusive. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, so I'm making a documentary oh my gosh. for Braincraft. So it's going to be a, like a TV hour, which is 45 minutes for the internet, but it's for the internet. And I got a grant from the Australian government to make a, an internet first documentary for mm. Braincraft. It's on the science and ethics of gene editing. So not specifically related to the brain, but it's going, the, the whole thing is going to be a big moral dilemma. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's where the kind of yeah. psychology comes into it. Yeah, I have all sorts of thoughts on that. Yes. <laughs> it's terrifying. Yes. <laughs> And it's coming too. Yes. And fast. And we have so many different countries that will all treat it differently. Yeah. And the idea with this is that we're going to travel around the world talking to researchers and community groups and people in all different countries. Um, I don't know how much detail I want to tell you right now because right. there's so much I could tell you. But 
Uh, I will just say that it's going into pre-production in the next few months and then we travel around filming and edit it and right. such. So it should be out in March of next year okay. on Braincraft. Well, that's pretty fast. It is pretty fast, yeah. yeah. So are you editing yourself? Or I'm not editing. I'm directing and writing and that's the hosting. Part. And there's a couple of other people who are also kind of researching and writing and someone who's coordinating all of our travel and such and someone who will edit it as well. So there's a small team of people cool. working on it, oh, which is exciting, exciting yeah. because I normally work by myself. So I'm looking forward to company. <laughs> <laughs> do you want some company right now? Would you like to meet I would something love... cute and adorable? Yes. Okay, let's do yes. that. Yeah. Hey there, Jesse. Hey. I just love how you just appear out of nowhere. <laughs> I like it too. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, 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 how you doing? Doing good. Good. Doing good. I'm uh, excited to share the animal with you. Okay, let's do that then. All right. I, okay. I, I'm, I'm ready. ready. I'm ready. Something I'm ready. that likes these. Mmm, mealworms. Oh, oh, yum. <laughs> Have so you ever eaten one? They're a meal. Have I eaten a, no, I've eaten a witchetty grub. What's a witchetty grub? A witchetty grub. grub. Um, Gosh, I can't. I don't know if well, I can so explain we'll to you a, what we'll it is. We'll just put a picture up yeah. for everybody at <laughs> home to see. Picture now of a witchetty grub. It tastes like a raw egg. Oh, yeah. oh that's not so bad. Yeah, that's fine. You've had raw egg? Well, I've had undercooked egg. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. I like myself a good uncooked egg yolk, apparently. Yeah. I, yeah. Like, I like didn't, Rocky. I didn't think I was going to like that, but now that I've had a lot of them, I'm like, yeah. That's real good. Do you, do you mean like a, a soft yolk is in runny or just right. actually yes, on runny? Runny. Runny, runny yes. is the runny yolk. Runny but yolk not is the, the best yolk. Not runny white. No, I've had runny white. I've been there. I, it's not particularly something that I want to do all the time. But like, okay. as far as like what a bug's going to taste like, mm -hmm. sure, I it could taste worse. a lot worse. Definitely. I killed a roach on my face once, and the smell <laughs> was intensely bad. There's four thousand, over four thousand species of cockroaches, and I don't think all of them smell bad. Well, I'll tell you what. I know the ones, one that smells ones we good. have in Florida. <laughs> smell. I have, yeah, there's one that's called a giant burrowing cockroach. Photo now, and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it lives in the rainforest in Australia, and it eats eucalyptus leaves, so it smells kind of like eucalyptus. Huh. Yeah, and eucalyptus oil is actually antibacterial, so it is a clean cockroach compared to so the disgusting just, cockroaches huh. that you have in your house. You so like you're out and they huge in the they're wilderness. Like this, yeah, they're like on. this big. It's like like huge. a hand sanitizer. Huge. Huge. Like, yeah, and it's like nature's hand sanitizer. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, I'd probably just use a leaf. Rather than the cockroach <laughs> that eats the leaf. <laughs> right, maybe. You could have leaf hands or you could have cockroach, cockroach hands. hands. <laughs> leaf hands are always my number one preference. I feel like I need to qualify the time when I kill a cockroach on my face. I was asleep at the time, okay, but not for yeah. long afterward. Gross. It was a, not Makes a fun sense. way to wake up. Gross. So Florida. this was like an automatic reaction. That yeah, you had yeah, there was like there was something. And was there that like white oh. milky cockroach it was juice like, yeah, on your face? Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. It, it was, and like it's a smell that like occasionally something will remind me of, and I'll be like, <laughs> gag reflex. Yeah, like certain Trauma. like certain candies even like certain candies have like a a hint Ooh. of what the inside of that cockroach smells like. I wonder, Ooh. candy. Why would you eat that? Well, I think like with <laughs> with like the normal stuff. Yeah. It's like it's like rotten fruit versus fruit. It still smells kind of like fruit, but it's like rotten. Papaya. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder if like the same really... species of cockroach would smell differently from like state to state where it eats. Well, right. If you fed it, it differently, different like, like or if you, yeah, if you yeah, fed it, it differently, it's not there. Right. Do, do you guys want to meet an animal? Sure. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to talk about cockroaches this whole time. Should have brought cockroaches. You should have brought cockroaches. You have a lot of them. <laughs> really? Uh huh. Oh gosh. Well, well next, next time. time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Maybe thankfully not. This how about how about so? Well, these guys stink. Okay, they, they sure. They do stink, but I hope they don't. Hopefully, they don't uh, remind you of cockroaches. But okay, um, what do they smell like? You know, some people think they smell like coffee pee. <laughs> coffee pee. Coffee pee. pee. Like what's the have... name? What is the name of? Yeah, I had a little little gag in my throat just then. What's the name of the animal in like Indonesia who eats like the coffee beans civet. and civet? Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, is ready? that kind of smell? Mm. No, 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 that's more like pee. This is more like ammonia-y. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I right. Is that because they've peed in that little pouch? Oh, uh, uh, yes. Oh my god. Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Here's your little friend. Oh, hey. He's going he's gonna to go right down to here. Oh, yeah. How about the shoulder? Okay. 
for the ca for the cameras. Oh hi! Oh hi! Oh hi! Oh my god! Oh my god! Okay. Oh jeez. He's a little bit more um, um, excitable. Oh yeah. What's your name? What What's uh, his or her name? This is Gizmo over here, and okay. this is Gadget. Gadget, would you like? Hi, Gadget. Here you go. Yum yum. I can't see you, Gadget, but I love you. <laughs> He's smelling you right now. He's smelling I smell all over great. the place. Oh, oh, where are you going? Oh, he might jump. Here, come here, you buddy. Gadget. Yeah, you give your guy a little Gadget, treat. I've never washed this jacket, so What's I this? hope that you like it. He is putting oh, his yeah. own smell on it. Yeah. You, you want to jump back here? Hey, hey. I've never washed this jacket. <laughs> oh, there he goes. Ooh, that was a good job. <laughs> he did really good. He did? Yeah. So Gadget is new. These guys, I should probably tell you what they are. They're sugar gliders. Uh -huh. Have you ever met one? I've never met a sugar glider. So IRL. they live, yeah. they're local to like the eastern part of Australia, so they live in, in the forest right around where you're from, and um, Gadget is really new to Animal Wonders, so he's going he's gonna to run back in his pouch and come out. He's super curious, though. Let's see if he wants a little treat. Here go, bud. Cause of death. Oh, delicious. It oh is, gosh, oh he, has, wait, is Gadget a boy or a girl? He's a boy. Is it, Gadget has the cutest little mouth. Like, can we look at that mouth eating that worm? That oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> look at that mouth eating that worm. <laughs> and then uh, Gizmo over here, he's pretty chill. He's yeah. about eleven years old. These guys. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah, he's 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 almost two, we think. Okay. So we rescue our animals, and so uh -huh. we don't necessarily know exactly how old they are. Um, but he was probably around um, a year, a little over a year when we got uh -huh. him. Um, what buddy? And. Uh, he was about two years old when we got him. So we, we've had him for quite a while. He's been out and, and hanging out on people a lot. Is that why he's more chill? Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly why. Yeah, this is, this is pretty um, big eyes. Old, old for him, you know, That's old news. <laughs> so where did you rescue Gadget from? Because I, I assume it wasn't the forest around yeah. Zola. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't, we didn't catch yeah. him. No, and we didn't go to uh, Australia to get him yeah. either. So these guys are very popular in the pet trade. And, um, right. So he, someone bought him as a pet, and um, they didn't realize what they were getting into. These guys, if you look at their eyes, they're they're very nocturnal. Not yeah. just like partially nocturnal. They're like they're sensitive to light, and, yeah. and they really don't want to be awake during the day. So um, unless that's, there's food. Unless there's food, so they're having like a midnight snack right now. Okay. <laughs> so that they're happy enough to come out and eat their food, and then they'll go back to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, they're awake at night, so they make. Noise all night. Yeah, and they're really noisy. Yeah. Yeah. They're what is it? What noise do they make? Can you can you do the noise? <laughs> well, there's an angry noise. The first yeah. one goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. I know that noise. Yeah. Yeah. You know that? You I heard know it? that noise. Okay. I know that, yeah. Okay. You've yeah. been walking yeah. through the forest and heard that? Yeah, well, I, I mean, I actually, maybe I don't know that noise. They're very, I feel like they sound similar to possums. Yeah, well, they And possums possum. have an angry night noise, which when you're trying to sleep, you'll hear them do that. Mm -hmm. or like on your roof or in the trees or like all That's around awesome. the house, you hear those noises. So these guys are a possum, not okay. an opossum. They are, they're possums. Hey, what? They're possums. They're not squirrels. They're not squirrels. They're not flying squirrels. Are ro squirrels. Are rodents, aren't yeah. yeah. So yeah. flying squirrels are part of the rodent family. These okay. guys are part of the. Um, they're marsupials. Okay. And um, and then they're part of the possum family, which is a bunch of, bunch of different night sense. dwelling little guys, uh, marsupials from Australia. And uh, then there's quite a few little gliders. Um, and uh, there's six different species of these guys. And these guys are probably the most common. And uh, they're going to be running around like crazy. So they're super active. Yeah. And they just bound and jump and run around all over the place up in the in the dense uh branches here you go buddy you're doing awesome oh you're can doing, i can yeah. i feed no yes you feed him yeah. do, you want, do you want him on you again um yeah yeah how about you give him a little treat and then yeah. Oh yeah. Mm. Oh look at that worm it's still alive oh yeah, yeah. that's Ooh, a beetle yeah. worm so it's actually a little beetle Oh, beetle larva. Beetle Excuse larva. Excuse me. Uh, yeah. Well, I called it a worm first. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> okay. You want one of these? Hey, gadget. Okay. It's okay. Stop. 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 Oh, this is tricky. I'm just gonna put him down there for you. <laughs> <laughs> good job, buddy. Good job. Well, I should just say good job to gadget friend. or Gizmo too. He's being amazing over you there. You are. Yeah. He has left. I think that's just worm guts. Ooh. ooh. Yum. Yeah. Where are you going now? He's just hanging out. He's still chewing on something. I can hear him. Oh, he just dropped something. Some just fell. Yeah. Yeah, it's just guts. Okay. Whoa. Ah! 
<laughs> what are you trying to do? Get him on the top of your head. Oh, but like maybe he should pee first. Pee before you get on my head. Oh, oh, what a good job. Oh, oh. he's almost went. He almost went. Here you go, over. buddy. I, gave I don't see where he is. He's, yeah. he's just hiding. He, he's just doing his own yeah. little thing. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to go on my head? So these guys, they smell pretty intense. So they actually, you asked if they, why they smelled so bad because they peed on this. And mm -hmm. yes, yes, they've peed all over this. And that's just mm -hmm. them claiming their territory. So they have a really interesting little social structure. Uh, they live in a little group here. Hey. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Good job, buddy. Hey. Awesome. <gasps> Hi. Here. Some more foods? Yeah. He's not oh, quite nervous. eating on his out here yet. Yeah. Gadget. Gadget, look at this tasty worm. Look how tasty it is. I feel like I'm talking to my dog now. <laughs> like, look at the worm. <laughs> hey. Oh. oh Gadget, I, I know. just I just want you to be happy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What did you do to you, Hank? Not me. What? What's that thing from Alien that grabs on your uh, face? No, or not no, from Alien, Hank, from Half Life. No. Put a picture of the thing from Half Life that grabs onto your face. Mm -mm. <laughs> no, In other news, Gizmo is very well behaved. Are you going well home? Behaved. Are you going to go home? Are you going to go and get. Oh, oh, good job. Good job, buddy. So they are obviously good at jumping, but they don't just jump. They're, they are kind of lazy in the wild. Now, I told you they're super active. They'll run around like crazy, but they're also a little bit lazy. Um, these guys, I told you, they're sugar gliders. And if we can get Gizmo up here, I can show you that he has this amazing skin. Oh, mm. yeah. So all that extra skin there allows them to glide from tree to tree. And they can glide a really long way. You know, and pet his little tail. Hey, it is like a possum tail. Yeah, so it's like a semi-prehensile. <laughs> they can't really hang from it. Okay. Um, but they use it to balance and help them, like a rudder as they're like gliding through the air. Mm -hmm. So they'll run and jump off their branch and spread their legs open and they'll get this nice parachute effect. And uh, they, they can go like 140 meters. It's, it's a really wow. long way. Oh, look at that. Hey, you want to with the nice guy on here? Let me yeah. put him on this shoulder here. here. You want to sit right there? Hey, Gizmo. Do you want the face uh, jumper, Hank? Uh, that's Oops. okay. <laughs> that seems, that seems like a bad idea. Um, so they, they don't want to actually glide unless they absolutely have to. So they're going to hang right. out. They're going to be eating like sugary food. They're called sugar gliders for a reason. They okay. eat sugary foods like nectar and sap and um, fruits, hey, juicy hey, fruits. My... But if they do yeah. need to move yeah, for some one. reason. <laughs> Sorry. I'm so, so happy. happy. <laughs> I love their little hands. Yeah, and it's that's so a very cute, cute little mouth. Yeah. yeah. Smile yeah, for the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they seem to like each other a lot. They do. Yeah. And that was really important. So um, these guys are very, very social. I told you they were, they had a hierarchy going on. And um, there's a, a dominant male. And mm -hmm. then there's actually a, a co-dominant male. Mm -hmm. And so they will kind of rule the, the territory and their little colony. And there's lots of females. And other, there's other subordinate males. Um, and the males do a really good job of taking care of their babies as well. So babies will grow up in the mom's pouch. And then um, she'll kind of drop them off at daycare with dad. Mm. And then she'll go out and find food. And then she'll come back. Um, and they will glide from tree to tree and they will mark their territories and they're really nice to each other but if any other groups come in they will defend their territory pretty uh, ferociously what wow. you doing bud what adorable animals aren't they so um, cute yeah what's going on i keep tipping him upside down yeah i don't know what's going on do you want to go home do you want to go no. home? I just want to. I want to sit here and chew on that. Mm. Oh thing. yeah! Ooh. Oh guns. yeah! Ooh. Look, ready? Can you give us a good jump. You can do it. I believe Yay! in you. Yay! Yay! Nice work, Thank guys. Thank you, Gadget and Gizmo. <laughs> Thanks for coming to the show. You're soft. <laughs> oh, I, that was funny. I was like, I was looking at a button, and a face came out. <laughs> Uh, it's a pleasure to have have him on the show. A pleasure to have you on the show. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. Now we're gonna record a little episode of Braincraft. Yes. Uh, so I'm excited. Go over to her channel, uh, to go over to Vanessa's channel, Braincraft, to see what we did. Uh, and Jesse, uh, you can find more of what she's doing at YouTube.com/AnimalWondersMontana. And thank you, as always, for joining us here on the SciShow Talk Show. Craig Venter got his own genome uh, sequenced, and I believe that was in the neighborhood of $100 million, which is, you know, that's down a lot, but that's still...